Garrett Stubbs of the Philadelphia Phillies, who had a night a few nights ago. We'll get into it. Garrett, what's going on, dude? And, uh, oh, look at that. Uh, you, you've actually yeah. got, you've got a nice day off today now, don't you? Yeah, we got, phrase, we got the same background. <laughs> yeah, look at that. <laughs> Mine's just not as lit up as yours. Let me, let me block this one. Hold on. I'm trying. Yeah, oh, there, there we go. go. Now, now we've got a good thing going right here. Yeah. Wait, so, are you at the so, ballpark, Garrett? Yeah, we're at the stadium. I mean, we're. Didn't we're they tell you got banged? You guys, yeah. Yeah, I got banged. Hey, grinders, man, we got to be here to make sure we get some stuff in. Come on yeah. now. Yeah. He, he he's coming on the show just for us, and everybody's waiting on the bus. Appreciate it, dog. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'll be at uh, 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so. Hey, uh, Go ahead, Scott. I, I just wanted to carry the combo into this. Yeah. I mean, I, we got to get your thoughts on on Bryce yesterday and, and how you personally also, like, deal with umpires when there's bad calls because it's tough for you guys. Yeah. I mean, first off, have you ever seen somebody's batting helmet get launched into the stands like that? <laughs> wow. <laughs> that, was in, that was incredible. I think as soon as he launched it, um, and obviously we could joke about it a little bit at the time because – uh, these games right here, we're already in the playoffs. We already hold, hold our spot, but uh, it sucks, man. It it sucks watching the guys at bat get taken from him like that. He grinds out a walk right there, uh, and obviously frustrated. He didn't. None of us. I was gonna give crap to delay for even checking the swing uh, from the dugout because I thought there was absolutely no way he went around. And of course, Angel's down there and and bangs him on it and. You, I mean, you guys know, going through an at-bat like that, you work your tail off to get to a 3-2 count and then spit on a pitch like that and get to first base. So for somebody to take it away from you, it sucks. What is Dusty doing down there? Dusty's like Dusty's like looking at Harper like – and he didn't even get in between them. Is, is Dusty <laughs> looking to get Harper an extra fine for, for – he's got to at least stand in between them. Uh, Dusty saw Top coming from behind – and figured Top was going to get there, but the guy Top was a little slow, slow yesterday, like like most of us, and uh, didn't get there quite in time. And then Dusty tries to shoot in there at the end, uh, but also wanted Harp to be able to give him his fair share of thoughts because you know it's not the first time that's happened to uh, one of the players on our team. I mean, you know, we had a pretty good moment last year with Schwartz getting tossed by Angel, so. Uh, I think he, he, he let him go all the way down there and make sure he could give it to him. Yeah, we were talking about Dusty Watham, your third base coach. I, I used just his first name. I shouldn't have. but And Topper, who's top, yep. Rob Thompson, he was, yep. he's the manager coming out. And you said he was a little slow, like a little, a little banged up. Who, who was the worst? Because you weren't the worst coming into the game after the celebration because you hit a dinger. Who was, who was like, whoa. Like you looked at it and you, you know, what was the, what was the guy's name on the, on the thread for team Israel? Shmoley? Oh, Shlomo. Shlomo. Legend. Yeah. Legend. Shlomo. Who was, who partied like Shlomo after you guys celebrated? Uh, so Marcy came in pretty banged up uh, afterwards. I mean, we were, we, we all celebrated as hard as we, as we could. It's fun, man. Making playoffs is no joke. Uh, it's a incredible accomplishment. So, when it does happen, yeah, that's that's a good video right there. Uh, <laughs> you, you know, you got to celebrate. You got to enjoy enjoy uh, all the hard work you put in throughout the year and celebrate. Uh, I told uh, some of my buddies. I mean, if you didn't play hangover games in the minor leagues, then you weren't doing it right. So I, I had plenty of minor league hangover games to prep for for uh, the other day, and uh, you know, it ended up all right for me. <laughs> hey. How did it feel finally getting your first home run out of the way of the season there? I mean, listen, it had to be kind of a relief. I'm, I'm sure you're getting ragged on by a couple of the players now. Yeah, we mess around about it. and I'm not a home run guy to begin with, but everyone wants to hit a home or at least of have course. a number there in the home run column. So uh, for it to come the day after we celebrate like that, I said uh, champagne and tequila is the only PED I need, so. Uh, I was messing around <laughs> with everybody about it. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Now, let me ask you this. Um, how you embrace the backup role here, man, with JT Real Moto. You guys have been the fastest duo, um, you know, with pop time and everything else. I mean, you guys piggyback off each other. I know JT's the man over there, but at the same time, you know, you need a backup guy 
to be just as good and understand his role. And I, I commend you for that. I appreciate it. Yeah. I mean, JT makes it easy, man. Like you said, he's an unbelievable dude. It's fun to work with him every single day and getting to watch his craft every day. I mean, if, if no, nobody's watched JT real Muto play catcher, it's a, it's a site and it's fun to watch. So he makes it easy for me. It's it's, if you're going to be the backup to somebody uh, might as well be the backup to the best out there. So it's fun when I do get my opportunities, I try to, you know, make the most of them when I do. Uh, and at the end of the day, it's just about winning a ball game. So I just want to contribute in whatever manner that is. And a lot of the times it's not necessarily playing in the game, but there's other things that you guys know about uh, throughout the day, whether it be sides or batting practice or uh, planning for the games with scattering reports and things like that. Uh, just try to contribute wherever I can. Now, let me ask you this. You played with David Robertson for a little bit too or no? Yeah. Okay, so, so here's I, all, all the fans want to know this: David Robertson, JT Romoto, who has the oh, better calf? <laughs> I knew this question was coming, man. Uh, Who's got and, the better calves in the league? That is tough. I'll say this: JT doesn't show them off enough, so no. maybe JT is hiding a little bit less than D Rob is because D Rob goes pants up and lets those things eat. So see now, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna now, go D Rob. Can, yeah, can I explain? I was going to go D-Rob, too, because you know what makes his calves bigger is his skinny ankle. So now no as doubt. it goes bigger, it looks like, you know, uh, a turkey leg or whatever you call him, you know? So, yeah. I but but D-Rob, he's always explained to me, he said, listen, he's got better calves than me, but I never see him, so I can't I can't say. See, that's that's my point. Whether whether it's true or not, D-Rob at least goes out there and lets the calves eat. He lets that, like you're talking about, the little ankle the, to the shelf at the bottom of the calf right there. Yes. Uh, yeah. No, he's those those calves have seen a lot of showtime. Oof. Some of the best you'll ever see. No. No. What? No. What? JT has the best calves. There's nothing that J. The only thing that JT is not perfect at. <laughs> is being a backup catcher. And that's okay because he has my <laughs> spirit animal in Garrett Stubbs as his backup catcher. JT wins whatever it is. Body contest? Yes. Only Skip Schumacher is more handsome than JT Real Muto. Mm. Hey, that's some that's some good catcher-on-catcher catcher love right there. I kind of went out of the catcher-on-catcher catcher love box that we're supposed to stay in and went with D-Rob. Uh, you know, the pitchers are kind of in the same boat with us, but they just don't grind no, as hard. So I, they're not. I, I respect that, Kratzy. I respect it. Yeah. Also, I'm and are serious. You, oh, go ahead, Kratzy. Oh, no, I was, I was just going to say, are you the only one that's still rocking the overalls from the road trip that you guys wore them on? Or is there other guys and you just you just are more of a red light kind of guy? Every time every time the camera's red light <laughs> turns on, you're you're in front of it. Most of the guys don't wear them, but you see like an Alvarado pop up. Dude, Alvarado Whoa. looks hilarious in those things. That is a <laughs> big human being wearing some overalls. Uh, but I was wearing them after wins, and then everyone liked them, so we ended up wearing them on the uh, road trip. Uh, but I still wear them after the wins, and we do like little mini beer showers after every regular season win. Uh, we celebrate all wins, man. I, I think – I think winning in the show is really hard to do, and every time you you get a W in the win column, I think it's worth celebrating. I just wanted to sneak this in there before we go on. Um, JT Romuto could be my quarterback on the Jets. Uh, just got to sneak in a little football talk. I <laughs> oh, legitimately think if I just suit him up this what is it Monday, we'd have a shot or a better shot. Yeah, I'll tell you what. If I if he was on my fantasy football team and I started him at quarterback. He's not doing well because I have cursed every quarterback I put in my fantasy lineup Ooh. this year. It's tough. Can it's my to elaborate? Fault. Who you Who's got? This year? Trevor Lawrence. Who? Trevor Lawrence. It's my fault. You're Ooh. in my lineup, and it's oh. just not going to go well for you if you're in my lineup. So he'll rebound. I ended up though. playing Jordan Love this week, and look what happened. Not well so done. good. So Trevor Lawrence is probably going to go off for 30 points on my bench this week. So have fun, buddy. Oh, is, that a, high, is that a high draft dude. pick? Did you draft him too uh, high? Did you reach? No, I, I took him. I took Jordan Love off waivers. Okay. Paid for him. But are you no, talking I mean, about Lawrence? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Lawrence. I, did, I did draft Lawrence. Yeah. Not that mm -hmm. high. Uh, I want to say the seventh, seventh, eighth, mid round, seventh. Okay. Yeah. That's Question: fair. I'm sure you've been asked about this a million times because our guys were kicking it around the other day. I know. At one point, everyone's like, "New year, new song, dancing on my own's gone." 
Now it's back. Also, even our production staff, they were like, what do they like about it? Like, what stood out to everyone? I, I kind of joked because I'm like, words are easy to say. It's got a little bit of, of EDM to it. And you know the Miami vibes. I'm like, a lot of these dudes don't listen to songs that have massive beat drops. And they're probably like, oh, here it comes. <laughs> but why, why do you think it's latched on so much among the team? And obviously, the fans are going to like whatever you guys like. Yeah, uh, well, it got brought in last year. And we, we tried to not have it around this year uh try to go with a new vibe find a new song and then april and may we were not playing good baseball uh and ended up bringing it back uh somewhere in may we were playing dc and we won a game and i think casty and schwarz were like just play the damn song and we started playing it we kind of went on a run since then uh but the re i mean people just like the song it's just a good vibe you song comes on it makes you feel good uh the lyrics had nothing to do with why we picked the song but everyone seems to be drawn to kind of the the lyrics and what the song's about i guess but uh we just like the 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 tune and it gets everybody going all right so you're in the big leagues right now we usually talk about big league things do the phillies still take buses from philly up to new york post game that is hour and so 45 nothing. last night, baby. Oh, hour 45. Oh, God. People need, to, people need to know that. Because when you go down to D.C., or it was when I played, the train. And I think the train is so show. Number one. It, it's better than a plane. Yep. I'm just saying. 100%. People, think, people talk about show flights and flying private charter. A chartered train to D.C. or Baltimore is the places we take it. Baltimore. Number one. It's the best. And New York, you're taking – Straight Bus up it, coach minor league buses. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. I had the I had the uh the football, the Thursday night football game on my iPad last night for the boys to watch on Prime. Uh so yeah, we were just sitting there on the bus, hour forty five to New York, and uh here we are next day. But yeah, it's not the best travel. Not big league. So no. you guys already know you're in the playoffs, and I think this this time of year when you have like three, four, five games left and you know you're in the playoffs, like it's the fun time. You're not really worried about stats. Well, some people are. You know, Dusty Baker always said, you know, average your stats up. You have 39 homers, try and get to 40 RBIs. Like this is the fun time of year, okay? Whether you get it or not, whatever. You know you're in the playoffs, you're ready to rock. What is what is the vibe going to be like come day one, the playoffs? I mean, it. you guys are getting the itch a little bit. It's starting to get a little colder, you know, maybe some sleeves coming on. This is like the itchy time for me, the exciting time. And I know you guys will be ready, man, because everybody talks about, you know, the Braves this year. You guys got them last year. So is it the same kind of vibe going in? Yeah, it's funny you mentioned the sleeves and the weather because that really does make it feel like playoff baseball in October. As soon as that weather starts to change and it has this last like week or two. Uh, but, yeah, the motivation is the same or even better than it's ever been. You know, last year there was a lot of pressure for us to get into playoffs. Then there was a lot of pressure for us to bring it to Citizens Bank Park again and have – playoff games in October in Philly. Um, and this year we got to do that right out the gate and have this wild card series in Philadelphia. And we saw what it's like uh, last year in the playoffs in that city. And I, I'll tell you what, it, it's a bucket list item for people to go watch a playoff game in Citizens Bank Park. It is an incredible atmosphere. If, if your bucket list item is go see the pyramids in Egypt, uh, Citizens Bank Park playoff games got to be on that list too. <laughs> <laughs> That's you got to add, add it Solid. on. Eric, add, yeah. Eric just ripped his shirt off. He's ready to go through a wall I'm, right now. Let's I'm go. so ready. I've I've experienced it. I experienced it yeah. when Garrett was still back in middle school. So <laughs> there's that. The uh, no, hey, said, winning the Johnny the, Bench Award. Yeah, I said to the guys too the other day because these games, like you said, they don't matter. But. Uh, winning's a whole lot better than losing. So it, it, the other day, you know, we come in after the, the big celebrations and we win the game the next day. And then the following day we lose by one run. But so we're still trying to win ball games. And, and like you said, there's some people that have some stats that they're, they're searching for. I think we have uh, three guys with 50 extra base hits and I think Stoddard's two away from 50. So uh, it'd be cool to see uh, four guys with 50 extra base hits on the same team. That'd be awesome. Now you got you're yeah. in the scene of the crime from the last series mm. right now. Put yourself in Marlins uniform, which I think you would look Ooh. really good in the throwback teal ones. Mm. 
<laughs> not the not the new ones. Maybe a City Connect, but put yourself in that uniform. What they're trying to accomplish. You guys were in the same spot last year, going into Houston. You needed to win a game. Marlins need to win these games. How hot would you guys be? That clubhouse, you, anything? Yeah, I. It that would be. It's already grindy enough to go through this last week of season and having to win baseball games and then to come here to to New York and be winning the game with a half I think it's a half inning left uh four outs or something uh with Soler up I mean come on man to call the game right in that situation and not be able to finish out uh I I get it man and the, the video right there of Schumacher letting the ground screw have it like I I feel for him and I if we were in that situation uh, I'd be pissed and it's easy to sit over here and like, Oh, you know, they're a division, uh, rival t- to say, and they're trying to get in the playoffs. So it's easy for us to be like, Ooh, hope they have to go back and play that game. Uh, cause if, you know, it help anybody who's has to play them in the wild card. but I'll tell you what, man, if I was those guys, I'd be furious. Yeah. It's a good well call. Said. Yeah. Yeah. And it's raining like crazy up there too. So you got to wait another <laughs> yeah. 24 hours for you guys to yeah. play. <laughs> They might have a triple header on Sunday with the rate that's yeah, going with that, this weather. It's, I hope we play 160 games if, if that's the, if that's the case. <laughs> yeah, you're going to get them it. in. Yeah. You're, yeah, you're no, getting on, them man. in. Yeah. If, I if they think... have to play the half inning, you know, just bam, 160. Oh, yeah. The sevens. Ooh, what two, about the sevens? Two sevens. That would be mm. – dude, when we were doing that, that was – I love that. That made a double header day a lot, lot better than the two nines. At least it's not a split doubleheader. We get to do the 30, 40 minutes right after the first game. So we don't have to wait around for three, four hours. And you get to play. Yeah. That's it. Love that. Anytime you can get some burn. I always feel like flying into New York, you know, obviously you guys drove, so you didn't get to see it. But I always feel like New York's always going to be underwater anyway. And now you're there. Did you see any flooding in the streets? Dude, we couldn't. So I texted you before, like 10 minutes before, and I was like, hey, man. There's a ton of rain. And I texted you because we were supposed to get off the exit. I'm about to be, you know, one minute from the stadium. And the exit was closed because it was uh, underwater. And, you know, like, we look over to the right and it was completely flooded. And I'm like, yeah, I don't think we can drive through that either. Uh, so, yeah, it, it is flooding everywhere over here. New York City, uh, great city. <laughs> Infrastructure, man. <laughs> a lot of water <laughs> being held in this city right now. <laughs> it's tough. All right, so I've yeah. got one more for you. I'm wondering if, if this team grinds through some playoff series, are we going to get a Reese Hoskins performance circa Kyle Schwarber 2016? You've got the teammates. I've been watching him take BP there. So I know, I think Topper said the other day, like maybe World Series DH pinch hitter, whatever, if everything lines up, if we make it, if. He keeps progressing, whatever, but it's still tough. I mean, you're around him. We know how badly he wants to be a part of this again after being out the whole year. And he's got the dude that could be in that same scenario, right? Like, Schwarber can tell him, yo, this is how I did it years back, and it was helpful. Yeah, and Schwarber and Reese, they do talk about it. Uh, I'll say this without, you know, making any expectations or anything like that, because I truly don't know. Um, the exact, you know, progression of that. I mean, I see Reese every single day and we talk about it, but I don't think he knows either. Uh, But I'll say this is that Reese Hoskins uh, wants to be in a Phillies uniform in October and the foreseeable future. And I think Philadelphia wants, I know Philadelphia wants to see him in October and in a Philly Phillies uniform for a long time. That guy's hit um, some gigantic homers uh, in the regular season. And then to top it off last year's, home run uh, against the Braves uh, goes up there with one of the best all time right next to Harps Homer against the Padres. So uh, he's working his ass off to get back on the field. Um, and he, yeah, he's been hitting BP and I, I, I told him the other day he was hitting BP and it was loud in the cages, man, loud with that guy hitting balls. I'm like, Peter, you have half a knee, half a knee. And you are hitting the ball harder than I ever can with both ass cheeks into it. <laughs> so that he 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 looks great, and I know he's he's working as hard as he can to get back. Your beard game is way better than his. So I saw I saw what he's rocking right now. You're 
your your little caterpillar you got on your lip is way better than his. So <laughs> just a little something. It's just a little something, you know. Just, October's just, coming around. Let it go a little bit. Hey, you got traded over to the Phillies. You know the guy's name that you got traded over for? Logan Cerny. Do you ever look up his stats? Because I always I never I never looked up stats of guys I got traded for because normally it was like you know, a box of balls or like somebody I'm like, oh man, they traded me for him. Is that washing machine like, still work? Yeah, that that the <laughs> iron mic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get it. Uh, I haven't I haven't looked up how he's doing. Um I know that I haven't seen him with the Astros in the big leagues. I don't know if he's still in the minor leagues with them, but uh my brother's in the minor leagues uh with Houston and I know uh he hasn't played with him. Uh, and my brother was in double A this year and I check his box score every night. So, um, yeah, I, I'm not sure where he's at. Okay. I didn't know if you followed him or not. He's, he's in high A. He, he hit, there you go. he hit 15 dingers. So he's got a little more hey. juice than you do, but more than, oh. that's more homers than I ever hit in a season. <laughs> yeah. He had 15 and 13 in the last two years. So, yeah. but he won't hey, wear overalls. Show homers, kid. Yeah. How many oh, show homers? Poppy. <laughs> Big oh, I like that. Yeah, and Kratz, he won't yeah. wear overalls. Oh, come nobody's on, Garrett Kratzy. Stubbs. Nobody's Kratzy, Garrett. come on. Come on. <laughs> Let that body eat in those overalls, man. Oh, I'll, I'll wear overalls. He was Good. talking about Logan Cerny. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll rock some oh, overalls. Kratz, will you wear, will you wear clothing? I was going to see Garrett if he'll wear them for a show during, you know, That's like one I'm of our thinking. playoff shows when it's when yep. it's the Phils. Yep. Kratz? 100%. I think that that's a play. If I had a pair, I don't have a pair of overalls. I don't even. I have one. I have one tank top. I will make sure that you get a pair of overalls sent over there, so I can see you on this show wearing them. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, yeah, uh, I gotta see this, that. This is why you're my guy. This is this is why I'm the Garrett's the number one fan club. Backup catchers got to stick together, man. Yes, we got to stick together. You're a starting catcher and a backup catcher's body. <laughs> We're an exotic breed. Exotic breed. Yep. Kratz, so uh, if Phillies take wild card series when? And, and Garrett brings out when, right? When? Um, you know, I'm just doing the, the baseball gods thing. Don't do that. Um, you, you wear the overalls <laughs> the day after for the show. While we show Garrett in the clubhouse, you can give us the firsthand analysis of what he's going through right now in terms of how his body feels with the buttons yep. touching the nips. Good? Locked. Yep. Yeah, Done. letting it eat. Letting it eat. <laughs> you said you send me an address and they'll they'll get over there. Kratz, Back. do it. You won't. Right now. Yeah. Right now. We're letting him go. Dude, do it. I have come on. Tell him your address. Hey, Fred, live, I appreciate right you. Now. Tell him live. I, appre- I appreciate <laughs> you. Know you what? can have my phone number too. 8675309. They're just gonna look up where you where you're from. Tell them. Tell them where I'm from. Tell them where I'm from. All we, right, get it done, Crash. Hey, Go ahead. Yeah, phrase Frank Sinatra. What's up? Yo, what's up? Oh, he's the best, bro. Come on. I got the Frank Sinatra rolling in Philly right now, and I saw you. I didn't know you were going to be on the show. I saw you over there. I go, another Frank Sinatra guy. I respect it. Hey, all day, every day, dude. That's all. I, hey, when I wake up in the morning, my kids want to say, Daddy, turn that music off. I got to play. Nice. I got to I gotta nice. get me going. You got good sure. taste. Got to, got to stick with the classics. A little, John, a, a little, a little scotch and uh, a little cigar there. Uh, play the tune. Come man. on, come on, Tom. <laughs> Thanks, you still bro. wake up to "Fly Me to the Moon"? Your walk-up song? No, I, no, not just that song. Just, just, <laughs> just, just to get him, all, just all to get him ready for the day. Love me, <laughs> tender, out of bed. love me, sweet. You are oh. the only one for me. Yeah, like I, I got him. All day, every day. Yeah. Can you imagine if Todd can't have his like can't do his day every morning until like it's fly me to the moon oh, no. and maybe he like plays a little like now batting. No, he, no, and that then he's always like, that would be classic. That would be like a Derek <laughs> Jeter thing or something. We would like need it. we would need to get we would need to get Todd some help if he needed to get up at like some people need coffee in the morning. Todd needs like fly me to the moon. Oh, and then I'm up. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah then you're awake. He, he's got a PA announcer in his house. Every time he walks to the kitchen, now entering the refrigerator. <laughs> Jackie, Jackie's like, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. You didn't clean up the dishes last night. Yeah. I am not oh, thinking man. you're, I'm not simulating an at bat for you. Exactly. You're you're like, no. oh, well, that happens in real life. The kids are, the kids are going off, right? Like they got too much sugar. Um, 
ah, oh, man, I, ca I can't handle this. And all of a yeah. sudden, you just hear, fly me to yeah. the, here he comes through the door. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> Rescue. Take that, Garrett. Thank you, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, have all a right, good boy, steak guys. dinner tonight in New York for us. And, uh, and go play two tomorrow. And, and good luck in the postseason, dude. And uh, you will be seeing a lot of great clips of Kratz and some overalls in about a week and a half, right? Can't, I can't wait. Thanks for having me on, guys.